starting. So just in case you uh, are inappropriate. Uh-oh, uh-oh, I got somebody in the waiting room. All right. So yes, we are recording. I'm gonna go ahead and get to it. Let me share my screen. Um, I wonder, can I do it with more than one? No, it's one at a time. So I have to come back. All right, I'm too far on my PowerPoint, Lord. Here we go. All right, hey guys, ladies, good morning, good morning, good morning. Um, this week, uh, yes, okay, so before I get into it, I am, if you can see behind me, looking at the little lake or whatever, um, we're out of town because Friday was my birthday and Saturday is my mom's birthday and Thursday was my uncle's birthday, so we were celebrating, so shout out to all of us birthdays, woo woo. Um, this morning though, um, on our first slide, as you can see, I changed it up a bit. I usually have a scripture, but I have an opening thought question. That's so teachery, ain't it? But anyway, <laughs> it says, what does it look like for you to surrender your problems to God? Mm. And just reading that, um, I probably should have changed problems to surrender everything to God, because it's not just our problems we want to give to him, but all things, right? And I got that from our daily bread on 921. That was one of their questions um, at the end of their little lesson thing. So again, what does it look like for you to surrender your all to God? Not just your problems, surrender your all. All right. That's a good thought question. As always, we look at Marianne Williamson's poem, Our Deepest Fears, not that we are inadequate, our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We were all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So we've got to continue, continue to continue to let our light shine. All right, these are all of the past, um, well, not all, some of the past, topics that we've prayed about during our prayer time daily each week. Um, here's some more of them. This was last week um, where we talked about how God is faithful. I love that. Um, and how his consistency is not dependent upon our inconsistency. Oh, we're thankful for that. Um, and today, 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 today. So your opening thought question was how can we surrender all our problems to God? And of course, our topic is I surrender all. Isn't that awesome? Just the title itself, I surrender all. So I'm gonna jump right to it. Um, if you look at point number one or whatever scripture reference number one, first Peter five and seven, the NIV version says, cast all your anxiety and I put in parentheses, worry on him because he cares for you. So the little bullet point says, when we trust Christ, we begin a lifelong process of surrendering to him. Lifelong process. And of course that is in bold because it's not just a one-time thing. It is certainly a habit that we must build. Oh, that's better if I talk, hold on. Yeah. It's a habit that we must build. It's something we've got to remind ourselves to do. It's something that we've got to do, uh, make a habit of it. So it's lifelong. You know, it's not a one hit or quitter situation. Repeatedly, we might have to keep 
reminding ourselves, nope, I gave that to God. I'm not going to keep worrying about that. Uh-uh. And um, again, it says, cast all your worry, all your anxiety on him because he cares. All right. Um, scripture reference number two, Abraham's story of his willingness to surrender Isaac. Woo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle back. Let me see. Hold on. Get my technology together. Um, I have the scriptures pulled up on my um, thing here. Sorry. And I'm trying to share them. So bear with me. Here we go. That's it. There we go. Like the here, here go. Good morning. Good morning. Hold on. I think somebody in the waiting room. Good morning. Good morning to those of you that just joined. So we're referencing Abraham and when he surrendered his only son, uh, what he was willing to. Here we go. Um, chat, Genesis chapter 22, verses 1 through 18. So sometime later, God tested Abraham. He said to him, Abraham, here I am, he replied. Then God said, take your son, your only son, whom you love, Isaac, and go to the region of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on a mountain I will show you. Okay, so right here, God told Abraham, right, you're going to go to the mountain and you're going to sacrifice your son. But I ain't even telling you yet where you're going. That's okay. So let me go back to my thing. What was the first point? It says, um, Abraham obeyed God, though it was difficult, right? So let me keep reading so we can see the how he obeyed. Early the next morning, Abraham got up, okay? So let's say God told me this yesterday on Saturday. Sunday morning, I'm Abraham, I'm up, okay? Abraham got up and loaded his donkey. He took with him two of his servants and his son Isaac. When he had cut enough wood for the burnt offering, he set out for the place God had told him about, right? So he still don't know exactly where he's going to do this oh so difficult thing to give up my only child. I don't know where I'm going yet, but God told me to go, so I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna go, right? So it says on the third day, I'm in verse four. On the third day, Abraham looked up and saw the place in the distance. So clearly God was like, that's it, that's the mountain. Cause in the beginning when God said go, he didn't tell him which mountain yet. He said, um, sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on the mountain, I will show you. So again, here, Abraham moved immediately. Um, when he got his resources together to do what God told him to do, he was shown where he needed to go, right? So, and, and it took three days, right? It's a, on the third day. So that mean they was camping out or they was traveling or whatever, right? So that brings me to the next point of today's lesson. Abraham's willingness to surrender. Nope, that's not it. Sometimes surrendering means waiting, right? Sometimes when I give my all, that don't mean it's a poof right away situation. All right, God, everything I want is happening. No, sometimes we still got to wait. When, we, when we're when we obedient and we surrender, there's still some time involved. Because remember, it wasn't until the third day God showed him. Okay, I'm going to keep reading. Verse 5. He said to his servants, stay here with the donkey while I and the boy go over there. We will worship and then we will come back to you. Abraham took the wood for the burnt offering and placed it on his son, Isaac. And he himself carried the fire um, and the knife. As the two of them went on together, Isaac spoke up and said to his father, father. Yes, my son, Abraham replied. The fire and the wood are here, I said. Where is the lamb for the burnt offering? Somebody meet you, Mike, please. Oops. Oh, they did. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hold on. No, you didn't. Let me get you. Okay. Sorry, guys. All right, again, verse 7. Isaac spoke up and said to his father, Abraham, Father, yes, my son, Abraham replied. 
the fire and the wood are here, Isaac said, but where's the lamb for the burnt offering? Um, Abraham answered, God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. And the two of them went on together. So again, Abraham is acting in faith. God said, go. The next morning he got up. He had to wait three days to figure out exactly where he was going. He left the service and went up to the place that God showed him he needed to go take his only son to go sacrifice him. And he's doing everything God said. Verse nine, when they reached the place um, God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and arranged the wood on it. He bound his son Isaac and lay him on the altar on top of the wood. Then he reached out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called out to him from heaven, Abraham, Abraham, that's so important. Like whoever God sends, whatever mechanism God uses to speak to us, we've got to be in tune enough with knowing, okay, this is God, or this is a messenger of God. Because he could have went ahead and slain his son, but the angel said, hold on, Abraham, Abraham. And Abraham was in tune. Yes, here I am. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Oh, Lord. Sorry, y'all. Do not do anything to him. Now, I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from him your son. Excuse me, y'all. Hey, I'm doing my prayer meeting. Okay, um, sorry. Do not, so I'm, again, verse 12. Do not lay a hand on the boy, he said. Do not do anything to him. Now I know that you fear God because you have not withheld from me, your son, your only son. Abraham looked up and there in a thicket, he saw a ram caught by his son. He went over there and took the ram and sacrificed it as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called that place the Lord will provide. Yes, he will. And to this day, it is said on the mountain of the, of the Lord, it will be provided. Verse 15, the angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand in the seashore. Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies. And through your offspring, all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. Okay, I'm going to go back to our um, PowerPoint. Excuse me one second. Got to toggle back. Oh, I'm pushing the wrong button. Here it is. All right, so look at these points because they're good. It's good. Right. Okay. So the story of Abraham, again, he obeyed God, even though it was hard, it was difficult. Bullet two, Abraham's willingness to surrender benefited his descendants. And then three, sometimes surrender means waiting. I want to go to back to bullet two about Abraham. Um, willingness to surrender benefited his descendants. It was something I saw um, Dr. Miles Monroe. He said um, the seed of fathers carries on for four generations so that's why in a negative sense when you have an alcoholic father then his son and then their son and then that son type situation or when you have a king and then the descendants for four generations so on and so forth so that really stuck out to me because sometimes we forget we make decisions and even though they don't affect us right then they affect our children Right. So we bless or curse our next generations by our surrender or our obedience. My Lord. So just remember that, you know, when, when we are in situations or when things come to us before we're so quick to decide, let's pray about it. Let's be sure about it. And then let's decide, because, again, the decisions we make affect our children and our children's children and our children's children's children. Amen. That's good. All right, now another story in the Bible that's very well known, the woman with the issue of blood. Now remember, she had this issue of blood for 12 years and I segue into her with sometimes surrender means waiting, 12 years. So basically her issue of blood was kind of like sores that would never heal, 
right? So she got sores all over her body and they won't scab up. So there's constant bleeding, right? There's this constant issue of trying to uh, get the blood or the body to behave as God fashioned it, to scab up, to clot, whatever, you know, so that the sores can heal, but they stayed open, right? So um, I'm going to go ahead and toggle to that so you guys can see that. Give me one second. All right, share the screen and make sure I get it pulled up. The woman with the issue of blood and everything, all the um, stories I'm referencing today are in the new international version. Okay, where are you? There you go. All right, so you should be able to see the scripture. It is Mark 5, 25 through 34, and I'm just going to quickly read the whole thing. Um, national, new international version. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet, instead of getting better, she was getting, she grew worse. And when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed immediately. Her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see the people crowded against you, his disciples answered. And yet you asked who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet and trembled with fear and told the whole truth he said to her daughter your faith has healed you go in peace and be free from your suffering all right i'm going back to the powerpoint because these are also excellent points all right so again this woman suffering with this 12 year issue of sores that can't seem to heal first point she looked at doctors, she spent all her money, her time and her energy on getting this thing taken care of, this healing, but only got worse. So in every, she tried everything she knew to do. I'm going to the doctors, probably went to some specialists, probably went to, to some herbalists and some healing doctors and some all kinds of stuff. And she only got worse, a bullet too. When she gave it to Jesus, she knew she had unwavering belief in his power. She knew she would be healed. So she surrendered that thing. I tried this doctor. I tried that doctor. I tried this method. I tried that. I tried all this other stuff. But she knew she was, her faith was solid, right? I know if I could just get through this crowd, I know if I could just press my way, right? We get weary sometimes. We get tired like, Lord, we just want to quit. We want to give up or we just feel like it's too much. But our faith has to hold on. We have to keep the faith. We have to press our way. We have to make sure we're like this lady. I'm going to get to this man because I know when I get here, I know all this stuff I done tried, it's about to, it's about to be over. I know I'm about to be healed. If I could just get, if I could just touch the hem, if I could just touch just a piece I believe that he's so powerful, I'll be healed, right? All right, last bullet. Again, she pressed. Um, she pressed on through failed attempts, the crowd, everything. And look at what I put in parentheses. At times, we have to push ourselves to remember our goal of surrender to God, to come back, reverting back to old habit, right? So once we say, okay, God, I give the situation to you, or... I surrender my will, not my will, yours be done, or whatever. We've got to remind ourselves because yes, just from being human, creatures of habit, we're gonna revert back to old ways. Our mind and everything is gonna try to go back to those old habits, but we've got to remind ourselves, uh-uh, uh-uh, I gave it to God. When worry tries to creep back in, uh-uh, I gave that thing to God right? And we've got to find us a scripture or something that's going to remind us. I Uh-uh. Because 1 Peter 5 and 7 told me I cast my cares on him because he cares for me. 
I cast my worry on him because he cares for me. I cast all my anxiety on him because he cares for me. We've got to remind ourselves. Amen. So um, just to sum everything up, it's a lifelong process. Surrendering is constant. It's not just once and it's done. Because again, we're human, we're creatures of habit. We're going to want to go back to old ways. So it's a lifelong process. God, I give it to you. God, I surrender. God, I'm not trying to run everything. I'm not trying to think that I'm in control because I'm really not, right? I realized that. Looking at Abraham's example, he was obedient. He moved when God said move. He had a real relationship with God. He listened for God's direction. And then he blessed his generations to come by surrendering, by being obedient. The woman with the issue of blood, it took 12 years, but she got a healing because she knew if I can just press my way, if I can just get here, I'm not worried about what happened in my past. Yes, what the doctor said didn't turn out, but oh, I still trust God. But oh, I know the power of this man called Jesus, right? She stayed faithful, she kept believing, and she pressed, and she received. So here's the question I pose. What might you use as a prompt to remind yourself to offer up your anxieties to him throughout your day. So what is going to be our day-to-day -day tactic or our tool or our strategy? What are we going to use to remind us when worry tries to set in, when uncertainty tries to set in, when life happens to us? What are we going to do to remind ourselves? Uh-uh, I got to cast all this on Jesus. I got to give this to God because I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not about to be stressing. How? What is our tactic? What What are we going to do? What is it that we're going to use? So the floor is open, ladies. You can turn on your mic. And the question again, what might you use as a prompt um, to remind yourself to offer your anxieties to God, to Jesus throughout your day? What are we going to do? Hi, this is Kyrie. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, um, I don't know. <laughs> hey, man. And so <laughs> I'm looking for suggestions. <laughs> okay. Hey, man. I don't, I don't know what I'll do what I can do to offer or maybe I'm not understanding the question so to remind think... yourself to surrender whatever it is so what what are you going to do when that thought comes in of maybe it's stemming for fear oh lord this about to you know that worry sets in what are we going to do that's going to help us to remember, uh-uh, 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 I'm giving this to God. Oh, no, 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 I gave it to God already. So it might be just that simple as confessing, saying it out loud. Uh-uh, no mind. Remember, we gave this to God. We're not worrying about this. You know, or it can be definitely praying about it. Okay, God, I feel like this thing is stressing me out, God. And I know in my heart, I said I was giving it to you, God, so help me. Help me release it and not carry it and not be burdened by it. You know, so prayer is a tool. Definitely scripture is a tool. Um, um, casting all your cares on him before, before he cares for you. And I know there are others that I can't think of right this moment. Um, maybe you can write, write down an affirmation or a scripture or whatever and keep it on your person and read it to yourself or, you know, these are just some, you know, things I'm offering. Cause like you said, you're like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> so I pray about it. I have a, a scripture that I use or I profess and confess. Okay. No, I'm the righteousness of God and I'm not worrying. And I'm not stressing. And I'm, you know, you speak over yourself are ways we can do it. Um, I saw some other people's um, little thing light up. Naida, were you trying to say something? Yes. Okay. Um, just just uh, continue to bring God into remembrance of his word. Mm -hmm. Just like you were saying, 
you know, have that scripture on hand, have that affirmation on hand. You know, God wants us to remind him of what his word says. And it says right in his word, whatever it is that we want. And it'll take care of, you know, getting us back in check, so to speak. Yes, I like that. Get us back in check. <laughs> and again, it's a lifelong process. We got to keep checking ourselves. We got to keep praying about it. We got to keep speaking the word. We got to keep. It's a consistency that produces the results we need. It ain't no one hit a quitter. All right, God, I got to say today and I don't have to worry about nothing else for the rest of my life. No, <laughs> it's a process. It takes that constant, making those habits, making prayer a constant part of our life. Make it, it's just like um, getting our body in check, our temple in check. If we were used to eating those things that will cause disease or cause problems in the body or whatever, we've got to retrain our palate, our mouth, our mind. We got to retrain those habits. We got to go past those drive throughs and we got to change from fried to broiled or, you know, throwing it in the oven versus flouring it up. It's a process. We've got to redo, you know, find new ways to do things if we want our body to be in right standing and we want it to perform the way it was fashioned to. So it's the same thing with our spirit. We've got to do that spiritual exercise, reading our words, speaking life. Um, we've got to practice. And I believe um, that the Bible does talk about um, trials building perseverance in us. So those things come so that we can build our faith, so that we can overcome, so that we can realize everything God put in us um, to be overcomers, to be encouragers, to uh, see miracles and perform them in the earth. Amen. All right. Somebody else, anybody else that wanted to comment or say something? Um, yes. Okay. My um, initial thought is always to make things as basic and as simple as possible. Okay. So one of the things I think about that we teach the children in the classroom that I try to use is to start out by just simply breathing, taking a moment to take a breath. And that's my trigger to remind me not to get caught up, not to get in the moment or to be caught, swept up by the moment or overcome by the moment so that I don't start to worry, but that I just breathe. I take that oxygen in. I give myself three breaths and I say, okay, Lord, that'll, that'll be my, that's my strategy. I have to breathe first but to help me to even focus on the scripture that will help me. If I just give myself that chance or that opportunity to breathe first and then to realize, no, 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 I will not be uh, distracted. Because again, a lot of things that distract us help, help me to take my focus off God and to think that I have to carry this burden when it's not mine to carry. That's good. That's good, mama. That's good. <laughs> I love that she used the word distractions because certainly, most certainly, um, that's where much of the things we face are distractions from our source, our power source. And we got to stay plugged in. Come on here, somebody. We got to stay connected. We got to stay plugged in. So I love it. I love it. Anybody else before we move to the prayer? Anyone else want to share out? Okay, this is Kyrie again. Okay. Okay, so after you, all what you just said and the two ladies prior to mm -hmm. now reflecting on me and when things get hectic or I'm starting to worry mm -hmm. about different things, I remind myself. Yeah. I, I mean, and I'm a, I'm a big person in talking to myself. Uh -huh. So I literally tell myself, <laughs> God, is, God has kept you all this time, Kyrie. Yeah. What are you worried about? Right. Or you haven't gone hungry yet. Yeah. What are you worried about? So I, I remind myself that God has done, has brought me out, has provided 
Um, all this time, yeah, all these 43 years, he's not going to leave you now. Yeah. You just wait. <laughs> you yeah. know, no, you can't have this here right now. Or no, you can't do this right now. But you, God has provided, I remind myself, God has given me everything that I needed. And a couple of things that I've wanted. So why are you trying to worry now? Or why are you getting yeah. overwhelmed now? When... Yeah. God has been faithful. You. That was our he's been faithful. He's been he faithful. has been he's been <laughs> faithful in the midst of our inconsistencies. I'll yes. say my consistencies and my unfaithfulness, unfaithfulness yes. and my going to the left when I should be going to the right. Yes, he's still faithful. He still, still. provides. He's still um, yes. he's still there. He's still that friend. He still heals. He still. He, yes. he's, he's still everything. He's yes. still. All caps. He's still. Yeah. So listen, Period. there's this song, uh, Waymaker, Miracle Word. Yes. yes. So there, um, a lot of people know that Miranda Curtis, you know, her rendition. But there's this, our Caucasian brothers, I don't even remember their name off the top of my head. But in the, in the end of the song, they say, even when I don't see it, you're working. Even mm -hmm. when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never. That's so powerful. Even when I don't see it, Lord, I don't understand what is going on. Oh, God, I know I've been praying about this thing for years, Lord. What is going on? And you can get yourself stressed out because you're like, Lord, I thought you said like Naida said, remind him of his word. I thought you said this or that. Even when I don't see it, I don't feel it. I feel like you ain't listening to me, God. But he's still faithful and working. Miss Rhonda, you had your hand up. Go ahead, Miss Rhonda. <laughs> Can you unmute? Uh-oh. It say my internet. Can y'all still hear? Y'all can holler. Yes. Okay. It was saying the internet connection was not working. Miss Bowers. I'm you... here. Right? Okay. I'm here, but I changed my mind. Oh. <laughs> okay. It's all good. It's all right. It's okay. I'll just say one thing that um what uh, Kira just said. I'll uh -huh. piggyback off what she said. Uh -huh. But um, I'm going to make this real short. But I use the scripture. Um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Mm -hmm. um, and I was reminded when I had my surgery because I was just so overwhelmed. And so God reminded me, um, as she said, that he's still here. He has not left me. He's taking care of me and all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. And so now when I get overwhelmed, I just always go back to that script and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me because he's going to take care of me. He's always taking care of me. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what I hold on to now Amen. because it's been such a struggle, but I'm going to get to the end because I've always gotten to the end and I know that he's going to see me through it and I'm going to be 100% again. Yes. Yes. Amen. So just to recap real quick before we pray, because we got five minutes. Um, casting all our cares on Jesus, for he cares for us. Remembering Abraham was obedient. He set up his future generations. Remembering how he and the woman with the issue of blood had to wait, even in surrendering. But God is faithful. He comes through. And he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. So he will um, keep his word. He will. So we've got to know it. We've got to live it. We've got to speak it. And we've got to be sure that when we let it go and we just stop trying to control things and trying to make it be the way we want it to, God has got us. God has got us. So um, we are definitely at our... Uh, most important part of this, our prayer time, our prayer. So we're going to jump right in. Father God, I thank you for this sun shining 
Uh, right now, God, I thank you for these ladies that have tuned in, God. We thank you for the topic this week of surrendering our all, God. So God, help us. Help us to let go. Help us to give what it is that you direct us to give. Help us to be who you would have us to be. Help us to stop when you say stop. Help us to go when you say go. Help us to stay connected. Stay plugged in because you are our source, God. We just thank you for your power, your presence. We thank you for your love that covers us, that keeps us, that directs us. And um, it's just all we need, God. So help us to be as Mil uh, Marian Williamson's poem says, help let that light of you that is in a shine, God. Let it shine on others. Let it overflow. Let your presence and your power in us, God. Just not only build us up, but build others up, God. We just thank you, God. Help us to remember in our prayer time, God, to pray about surrendering or any other thing that's on our hearts and minds, God. Bless every person that's connected to everyone on this call, on this Zoom, on this group, Lord God. Just have your way in our lives, Lord God. We just thank you. We bless you. We praise you. We uplift you, God. We give your name the glory. We just thank you, Lord. Um, we pray about everything happening in our nation. We lift up not just the president, God, but the Congress and the people that make the real decisions about things going on in life, God. We, we speak your word even in that, God, that there's nothing that can separate us from your love, God, that you're in total control, God. In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with you, God. So we speak the word, God. We speak um, abundance, God. You said that we'll have life and have it abundantly. And God, we look for that abundance in our spirits, in our minds, in our bodies, in everything we do, God. We just bless you and we thank you. We thank you for this time. And we just look forward to what you are doing in the earth through us, to us, and for us, God. So we just thank you. We bless you, God. And we give all things to you, God. We will not worry. We will not stress. We will have peace. We will have miracles. We will have the things we seek. We will have them in the name of Jesus, God. So we thank you. We love you, God, and we bless you. In Jesus' name, we continue to pray. Amen. 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 It is so. Amen. Amen. It is so. So, ladies, um, I'm so excited. <laughs> but that's it. We got like a minute and 10 seconds. So if there's anything on anybody's heart you want to say, you got a quick little second to get it out. And, and we're done for today. That's it. Thank you all for being patient with me. Yesterday was Saturday, and I know, you know, that's our usual day, but I was so through. I said, I got to make sure I make it up Sunday. So they won't be like, oh, no, she, we don't know when she's going to do it. So I just wanted to make sure we got it. But um, I love everybody. Naida, you wanted to say something? No. You was just talking in the background. No, I was just saying thank that you. Was, That's uh, it. Love you. <laughs> love you too. Go, mama. I did have one last thing. Okay, quick. My uh, when in the in the midst of your prayer when you spoke of abundance and how we will live abundantly, I, I just thought about in the midst of this pandemic, this is the most abundant life that we are living. I'm just saying it has just been such a blessing for God to just shut it all down and have us focus and realize what's important in life. Mm -hmm. That people, that relationships, that not things or stuff. Yeah. That's not abundance, but the richness of our relationships, the power that comes in giving, putting him first 